Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout and be entered into the month-long giveaways, culminating into a Black Lotus and First Edition Charizard. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. For today's deck, my Patreon supporters voted that I should build around Willow Geist, the 1 mana 1 1 Tree Folk Spirit from Midnight Hunt, has Trample, and says whenever one or more cards leave your graveyard, put a plus on plus one counter on it, and then when it dies, we also gain life equal to its power. So if we want to maximize Willow Geist, we're gonna need plenty of graveyard synergies, ways to fill our graveyard, and ways to replay cards out of our graveyard, ideally creatures, which is where Skyclave Shade comes in handy, the 2 mana 3 1 that cannot block, also a Skicker for 2 and a black, in which case it enters with 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, and then thanks to Landfall, we can replay Skyclave Shade out of our graveyard, which will also put a counter on Willow Geist. And then at 4 mana we've got two copies of Dracolich, the 5-2 legendary zombie dragon with flash and flying that enters battlefield tapped, and we can cast Dracolich from our graveyard if a creature not named Dracolich died this turn. And then we've got more synergy at 1 mana, with the full playset of Death Bonnet Sprout, a 1-1 fungus saying at the beginning of our upkeep we mill a card, and then if there are 3 or more creature cards in our graveyard we can transform it into Death Bonnet Hulk, a 3-3 saying at the beginning of our upkeep we may exile a card from a graveyard, and if a creature card was exiled this way we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on the Hulk, so not only are we milling more cards into our graveyard, but we can also potentially grow Willow Geist if we're willing to exile cards from our own graveyard. And then to make sure that the Sprout transforms as quickly as possible, we've got a very high creature count in this deck, with only 22 lands. We do have 4 copies of Sentinel to make up for it by making extra mana. And then only 4 non-creature spells, which are the 4 copies of Tapping at the Window, a 2 mana sorcery that lets us look at the top 3 cards of our library. We may reveal a creature card from among them and put it into our hand, and the rest goes into our graveyard to potentially enable more graveyard synergies. And with the current number of creatures in the deck, our hit rate to find a creature is at least 90%, so we're very likely to find a creature. And then we can also flash it back out of our graveyard, which is another way to put a counter on Willow Geist, and then potentially find more creatures, so that's going to give us a nice bit of card advantage, as well as putting more stuff into our graveyard. And another great way to put cards into our graveyard is Old Stick Fingers, which has power and toughness each equal to the number of creature cards in our graveyard, and when we cast it, we reveal cards from the top of our library until we reveal X creature cards and put all creatures revealed this way into our graveyard, and the rest goes on the bottom of our library in a random order. So even if we cast it for X equals zero, it can often be a very large creature if we've got other ways of filling the graveyard, and then in the late game makes for a great mana sink to potentially enable more graveyard synergies. And then at 3 mana we've got the full playset of Eccentric Farmer, a 2-3 that when it enters the battlefield mills 3 cards, and then we may return a land card from our graveyard to our hand, which will also trigger Willow Geist. And then we also have two copies of Black's Vexing Pest, although we're more interested in Search for Black's, the 4 mana sorcery lets us take a look at the top 5 cards of our library, we may put any number of them into our hand and the rest into our graveyard, and we lose 3 life for each card we put into our hand this way, so it can be a nice bit of card advantage, especially against control decks that don't pressure our life total, but it's also just a great way to put a lot of cards into our graveyard, even if we don't want to put anything into our hand, so that can also enable our graveyard synergies, and the Despite us being more interested in the sorcery half, it still counts as a creature for Death Bonnet Sprout purposes. And the same applies for Egon, God of Death, the 3 mana 6 6 legendary creature god with Death Touch, saying at the beginning of your upkeep, exile 2 cards from your graveyard, and if you can't, sacrifice Egon and draw a card. Although we're often going to play Throne of Death at 1 mana, the legendary artifact saying at the beginning of your upkeep, mill a card, and for 3 mana we can tap it, exile a creature card from our graveyard to draw a card. So more ways to enable Willow Geist and to potentially fill our graveyard with Throne of Death. And of course both halves play well with each other. And then the only card that we haven't covered is Eye Twitch at 1 mana, the 1-1 one, one flyer, saying when it dies we get to learn, so in best of one we have a 7 card sideboard we can access, including Environmental Sciences, Necrotic Fumes as removal, Conjuration can gain life and find a creature, Containment Breach deals with artifacts and enchantments, two copies of Pest Summoning, which also has a bit of synergy with Blacks, which will give those pests plus one plus one, as well as pumping the Eye Twitch, and then one copy of Mascot Exhibition as a nice curve topper, making three different tokens. 
and then mana base includes two copies of Hive of the Eye Tyrant as an extra creature land, then four basic swamps, eight basic forests, four of the Black Green Pathway, and four of the Black Green Snarl. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. Probably gonna kick things off with a Sentinel so I can generate more mana on turn two. And then we're hoping to draw an extra green source Willowgeist instead, up against a red-white burn deck with turn two flame channeler. So can just play double sprout here. And then we'll play a Throne of Death. So plenty of ways to fill the graveyard. Opponent's gonna take out one of the Sprouts. And they get to learn getting environmental sciences. Channeler transforms into Embodiment of Flame, which can generate card advantage. close to transforming the Sprout already, but for now play another Sprout and a Willowgeist looks fine. And we'll hit for one. And then next turn we're very likely to transform Deathbonnet Sprout. Willowgeist gonna eat a Sacred Fire. Not gonna be able to play Draco Lich right now. But that does mean both Sprouts will transform. And they can also exile the Sacred Fire from the opponent's graveyard. All right, let's see here. Can play Sacred Farmer and then get back my forest and then play Shade. Although that's not gonna be with the Willow Geist in play, which I kind of want to have him play before I start playing stuff out of my graveyard here. So maybe kick things off with Willow Geist and then play Farmer, which triggers the Geists by itself here. And then I'll get back. Forest seems fine. And hit for six. And I think I hang on to my forest so I can play Skyclave Shade next turn. Opponent finds Thermo Alchemist with the embodiment. But yeah, we're seeing kind of the power of our deck generating all these powerful one mana threats. So it's difficult for the opponent to keep up with their burn spells. So three unknowns in hand, two mana. And another Sacred Fire is going to kill our guys before it gets out of range. And I'll take three. Still at a healthy 14 life here. And start by milling. And then I can exile my own creatures if I want to grow the Hulk or I can go after the opponent's Sacred Fire. I think we'll get rid of double Sacred Fire first, and then we'll start growing the Hulk with our own creatures here. For now, I could replay Skycliff Shade, either for two or for five, if we use Sentinel for mana to kick it. And then I could also flashback tapping at the window. If I played for two mana, yeah, that seems fine. Find Sentinel. So we'll play Shade, since the farmer doesn't have a good attack into the Alchemist anyway. And attack for six. Can also start drawing with Throne of Death. 
opponent finds a land with the embodiment. And hits us for three. They also could have activated Den of the Bugbear, but they're gonna start casting more spells to untap Alchemist. Another channeler. Alright, times two. And get to untap. And then now I'll start exiling creatures out of my own graveyard. Starting with, let's say, an Eye Twitch. And an Egon. Ooh, Stick Fingers is looking good too. So let's start by attacking. And if the shade trades, I can still replay it by playing my land. And damage. Opponent takes eight. And then I could even replay Draculich if I wanted to. Is that better than just playing a big stick fingers here? It's kind of a close call. I could play Shade plus Draculich. Although that doesn't leave me with many blockers, which might be a concern. So maybe I go with Stick Fingers for X equals zero. And then I can still play Draculich. Uh, I wouldn't be able to play Sentinel though. So I can play Draculich tapped. Or I could go for Sentinel plus Shade, have maximum number of blockers out. But I kind of like getting the extra threat here. So I'll have a 6-6 Stick Fingers back. Which should be enough to soak up an attack. And our opponent pretty much has to burn us out here. Which is going to be a tall order. Sacred Fire kills Draculich. One unknown in hand, so... They can maybe attack with Den of the Bugbear, but then... That's also going to leave them vulnerable on the way back. Alright, get to untap. And we'll exile one Sacred Fire. And then one creature is probably fine. Okay, picked up another Shade. So, yeah, let's start by attacking. If I were to attack with every one point, it's got three blockers. Farmer just gets blocked by Alchemist. So I think I just send in the larger creatures first. Make the opponent shun block. That's fine. And then I can replay Draculich. Plus maybe a Skyclave Shade. Although if I want to play it really safe, I want to keep as many blockers back as possible. And playing Shade requires me to tap Farmer and Sentinel. Because their opponent could still burn us end of turn and then send in the Bugbear. Alright, GG's. Looks like we got there. Thanks to a nice explosive start with plenty of one drops. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Sentinel into perhaps Shade plus Sprout. And then we've got some four mana plays potentially with Search for Blacks and Draculich. Opponent blue red. It's gonna foretell a card. Play shade and sprouts.
and next turn we could already play a 4-drop. Alright, found a tapping at the window for free here, so that's nice. Now I could also go Willow Geist's flashback tapping. Although for points keeping up a counter spell, being able to play Dracolich at instant speed is also tempting. So let's do that instead. And then just hit with the shade, probably should have waited to play my land. Uh, they're gonna bounce shade, that's okay. The plan is still to play Dracolich. And we'll see if this gets countered. It gets bounced instead. Fair enough. So lots of bounce spells from our opponent. The foretold card, maybe Alrun's Epiphany that they're setting up. And then I want to start emptying my hand as quickly as possible so the teachings is not going to be as effective. So that probably means playing Willow Geist plus Dracolich. Start with Geist. And then I can hit with the Sprouts. And flash in Dracolich in response to the teachings or end of turn. Alright, opponent's gonna double their next spell. Which is gonna be teachings, and uh, yeah, even if I cast Dracolich, we still have more cards in hand than the opponent, although that doesn't necessarily count for the copy. So now the second teachings actually didn't do anything. Alright, so five, six mana potentially. Can hit for a healthy amount. Could also flashback tapping to grow Willow Geists. And then I can still play a Skyclave Shade, for instance. Probably gonna end up playing Throne of Death instead of Egon, since my graveyard's kinda empty. So if I flash back, play Throne, I could still play Shade as well. Alright, let's start there. Find another Willow Geist. And then I think I still stick to the plan. Play Shade. And then play Throne by tapping Shade. And attack with the rest. Because if my opponent does have a sweeper, I don't necessarily want to have both guys in play. Right, there's the first of potentially many epiphanies. Although at least no author pressure besides the bird tokens themselves. Right, opponent's gonna copy the next play once again. And a divide by zero, gonna bounce two creatures, or I guess the throne here. They get to learn. Alright, that wasn't so bad. Opponent gets mascot exhibition. Alright, we transform our Hulk. And picked up a land, which is a pretty big deal. So let's start by attacking. I'm okay if guys trades for double bird. Alright, that's kind of the obvious block. Which now lets me play Willow Geists. And then replay Dracolich. Growing both Geists. Play land, replay Skycliff Shades. Growing both guys once again. So, very nice turn. Gotta hope there's no sweeper. Alright, just a mascot exhibition. That's fine. 
And then do I want to exile something from my graveyard, perhaps? Sure. Grow the guys once again. Farmer will grow them too. And our opponent concedes. Not sure if they're exactly dead on board, but it's got to be close thanks to Trample. So that's going to leave us in a great position. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Turn one Sentinel, turn two... Can triple one drop even. And then stick fingers, a nice mana sink. Put on black green and a warlock class. Alright. And then I'm happy if I draw land, because then I can play Dracolich. Opponent are gonna hunt for sciences. Right, Dracolich in my graveyard too. So I Twitch can attack, play Stick Fingers for one. And it's only gonna get bigger over time. Skyclave Shade, more value we can get out of the graveyard if we find a land. And the Sprout's also close to transforming. Opponent gets a mountain. Right, and Sprout transforms, that's why I want to put the Throne of Death trigger first. Land sadly comes into play tapped, but I can still replay Skyclave Shade out of my graveyard. So I think that means I attack with everyone. Hope there's no sweeper in our future here. Binding goes for the Hulk. Alright, so can attack with a team, flash in Draco Lich end of turn. Seems good. If they play a sweeper, I can even play the copy we have in our graveyard, potentially. And yeah, burn down the house is gonna do exactly that. So let's learn for... Could get a containment breach to blow up the warlock class. Which is maybe part of a two-card combo with the two-mana demon. Yeah, sure. And our opponent packs it in. I was going to play Dracolich end of turn, which would put them to three at the very least. And that's going to leave us in a pretty good position, I think. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a fine hand. Turn one, Death Bonnet Sprouts, followed by... Probably going to go with Throne of Death. And then I have to decide between Eye Twitch and Willow Geist. Turn one Rune Crab from the opponents. Ooh, against the mill deck. Well, I probably don't want to be playing Throne of Death in that case. So let's just go Geist plus Eye Twitch. And then, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to the opponents filling my graveyard for me. Although we do have to be careful with playing some of the self mill cards. which will be helping the opponents. So blue-red points towards a Hideous Laughter deck. Hideous Laughter itself exiles, so that doesn't fill my graveyard for me. Sapping at the window. Alright, so I can play Eccentric Farmer. And then next turn maybe play Egon, once there's more creatures in the graveyard. And I'll get back a land. 
an attack. Opponent seems to be holding priority. Maybe they've got something like Consider. Maybe a one mana bounce spell. Who knows? Alright, Skyclave Shade in the graveyard too. And then God of Death can also help grow Willowgeist. Sprout's gonna transform. And yeah, let's attack with the team. Although I guess I could play Skyclave Shade first, which would grow the Geist. But then I can't play Egon. Only have the one Skyclave Shade. Yeah, I guess we'll just uh, attack and then play Egon. Plus maybe another Death Bonnet Sprout. See if they have any interaction. Alright, Fading Hope was the bounce spell that they uh, seem to be holding last turn. Fair enough. In that case, I like playing Willow Geist and Egon. Alright, Pyre kills Hulk. Opponent's not gonna put the crab in harm's way, takes three. And yeah, let's play Geist plus Egon. Avoid milling myself. And then the guy should be able to pick up a few counters along the way. There's a Hideous Laughter, which exiles. We're down to 20 cards, because our curve is quite low, so Hideous Laughter is especially effective. And then... I want to exile one creature here uh, to grow Geist, because if we exile two creatures it still only picks up one counter. And then probably don't want to be flashing back tapping, so just attack with everyone, play Sprouts. Which will transform right away. And then I can play a Skyclave Shade as well. I guess I wanted to probably play this pre-combat to put an extra counter on Geist. So our opponent should have been at 5. We'll see if that's going to make a difference. Iteration. Okay, so best they can do is another Hideous Laughter with 19 cards left. Yeah, it's not impossible for them to kill us. I guess they also get to play a lane, so it's more like 16 cards left. If they go second crab, play a land, and then play Cacophony, it would be 6 plus 8, 14, that's not enough. And our opponent packs it in. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Turn 1, Sentinel. Turn 2. Probably go for Throne of Death plus Eye Twitch. Or I could play Stick Fingers. So, yeah. Let's uh, play the Throne and Eye Twitch, and then I can hit for one as well. And then next turn I can play Stick Fingers. Our opponent does appear to be holding a one mana play. And it's going to be a spike field hazard, explains why they didn't kill the sentinel. Does exile the eye twitch, so doesn't even get to learn. Put in blue reds. Alright, so I can play stick fingers for x equals 1. Sentinel can attack. Could also wait on old stick fingers. Could activate Throne to draw a card by exiling Blacks. Although the more creatures, the better for Stick Fingers. Yeah, I think I still play old Stick Fingers here. The turn where my opponent potentially keeps up a counter spell is where it's more beneficial to use the Throne. Alright, nice. Found a Skyclave Shade. 
which we can play next turn. And then I'll have to decide between playing it after attacking or maybe playing it kicked, which will require me to tap old stick fingers as well. Opponent holds up three mana. So given that our opponent's keeping up mana, I think I just attack with the team and then play a 3-1 Skyclave Shade instead of a kicked one. Right, opponent's got Cathartic Pyre. That works. Opponent's gonna get a nice 2 for 1 with iteration. Got a good full graveyard here. In case we find a Death Bonnet Sprout, it'll transform right away. And Skyclave Shade, a good recursive threat, which is good against these blue red control decks that don't have much exile base removal. Tapping at window can provide some value too. So, do I attack with a Sentinel? Is a question now. I think I just attack with Shade. Probably be able to use the mana from Sentinel here. So let's maybe play Eccentric Farmer. And then I can flash back the tapping. And that's a miss, but it finds another tapping, so it's still okay. We also have our creature land we can activate. Opponent wipes the board, but it's not a huge setback. Alright, so kind of liking play kicked Skyclave Shade, play a Death Bonnet Sprouts. Try to keep up the pressure. Six mana. At least we don't have to worry about Alrun's Epiphany just yet, since they didn't foretell it. Sprout transforms. And now that we drew Dracolich, I'm just gonna attack. Opponent might have a Deluge they want to play to draw some cards. Alright, and divide by zero instead. Fair enough. Do they have a second copy for Shade too? They do. Alright. So in that case... Opponent searched up Introduction to Annihilation to Exile Skyclave Shade. Do I want to still go with a Draco Lich plan? Maybe that's better. And then play Sprout, play Sentinel, flash in Draco Lich end of turn to avoid the sorcery speed annihilation. And Sentinel could also be good if our opponent goes for Epiphany as a 1 2 Reacher that can block the bird tokens. Alright, opponent's gonna foretell Epiphany now and play a main phase deluge maybe to hit their land drop. That's gonna leave them tapped out. So I'm getting close to lethal here. Draco Lich is 5, plus another 4 on the board is 9, plus 3 from Hive. So we're looking at 12 damage. Not quite enough for lethal but that might be the play here, just to put them low so a single hive is lethal.
could still keep Sentinel back. And we'll exile the Deluge. This way Sentinel can block the Epiphany bird tokens. In case your opponent combos off. Uh, iteration, take two extra turns. And our opponent's still at three, so a single Hive attack could win the game. Uh, sciences, I guess, puts them back up to five. All right, we'll see. At least we got to exile the Deluge as well. Opponent foretells what could be another Epiphany. And annihilates the Sentinel, of all things. Yeah, they just want to start attacking with the birds. And they're going to get to hit me for 10 more damage, at least. And I guess with iteration, that's just going to be game over here. Alright, so that's what uh, Epiphany deck looks like when it's comboing off. Get pretty close there, but not quite. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Kick things off with Death Bonnet Sprouts. And maybe a turn to Skyclave Shade. Facing Snow Covered Swamp. So it could be a more controlling deck, as we see Acquisitions Experts. Yeah, that can take a land. Play Skyclave Shade, I'll keep Forest in hand for Snarl purposes. And hope to mill over more creatures. Alright, point's gonna make me discard too, so shade for sure. And then probably eye twitch. Is their opponent on a black discard deck? Sprout transforms into Hulk. And then I can attack. If they block the shade, just play land, replay it. If not, play stick fingers. Currently a 3-3, so if I played for 1, it would be a 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, let's replay the shade. Although I guess there's an argument for playing stick fingers, and then next turn I can play double shade, which is more mana efficient. Alright, we'll do that instead. So I've got a decent board presence. Hope they don't make me discard my land. And then I want to attack first and then play double shade. So we don't shrink stick fingers before damage. I guess we might want to watch out for a Meat Hook Massacre for three or... Something like a Crippling Fear could be a reason to keep stick fingers as a 4-4. Four, four. Right, Disciple sadly gets my land. And the Hulk can exile the Acquisitions Experts. Alright, picked up a land, so smash for 9, and then play Hive, replay 1 Skyclave Shade. So our deck is pretty good at grinding against these control decks, thanks to all the graveyard recursion. Just gotta watch out for exile effects. Deadly Dispute sacking the zombie. They could have technically attacked for two and then sacrificed it end of combat before the decay trigger resolves. Although I don't think that's gonna make a huge difference here. Keep exiling the opponent's creatures for the time being. 
And then eccentric farmer can grow stick fingers a little bit more potentially. Seems worth it. Now next turn we're probably going to see a blood on the snow. So that can wipe the board. But we still have Hive of the Eye Tyrant to maybe cross the finish line. Although it looks like we have lethal right now instead. Alright, sweet. So yeah, we got to see our black green fungus farm deck in action. And we were able to do some pretty cool things, transforming our death bond sprout almost right away. Especially in combination with Throne of Death, being able to grow the Willow Geist at an impressive rate. And then we still have a little bit of late game staying power thanks to Skyclave, Shade and Draco Lich, so we don't simply die to the first sweeper the opponent plays, unlike some other creature decks. But it is still important that we're off to a quick start, because we don't really have any interaction, so we need to be able to apply pressure quickly and then maybe back it up with those recursive creatures, otherwise we might fall behind. And then Old Stick Fingers is also impressed as potentially just a 2 mana creature that's incredibly large. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.